epistle of James is the proverbs of the New Testament because it is written in the precise moralistic style of wisdom literature. It is evident that James, who is the author of this epistle, was profoundly influenced by the Old Testament, especially by its wisdom literature and by the Sermon on the Mount by Jesus Christ. Throughout his epistle, James develops the theme of the characteristics of true faith. He effectively uses these characteristics as a series of tests to help his readers evaluate the quality of their relationship to Christ Jesus. Amen. James seeks to challenge these believers to examine the quality of their daily lives in terms of attitudes and actions. A genuine faith will produce real changes in a person's contact and character and the absence of change is a symptom of a dead faith. One of the most difficult areas of the Christian life is that of testings and temptations. James reveals our correct response to both. What is it? To testings, he says, count them all joy. To temptations, he says, realize that God is not their source. Amen. So then James talk about the characteristics of faith. Today we are going to look into the first characteristics of faith. That is faith obeys the word. Faith obeys the word of God. Amen. If we read from uh, chapter 1 of James verses 19 through 27, we can identify, we can notice this characteristics. Amen. A righteous response to testing requires that one be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Amen. Hallelujah. So we can read it from verse 90. It says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Even Proverbs says, Chapter 10 verse 19 says, In the multitude of words sin is not lacking, but he who restrains his lips is wise. Proverbs 17 verse 27 says, He who has knowledge spares his words, and a man of understanding is of a calm spirit. Proverbs 16 verse 32 says, He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty and he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. So quickness of hearing involves an obedient response to God's word. True hearing means more than mere listening. The word must be received and applied. Amen. The word must be received and applied. Verse 20 says, For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. And 21 onwards it says, Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks on to the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work. Amen. This one will be blessed in what he does. If anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not 
bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart this one's religion is useless pure and undefiled religion before god and the father is this to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world amen so if we heard a sermon every day of the week and an angel from heaven were the preacher yet if we rested in hearing only it would never bring us to heaven mere hearers are self deceivers that's what james says however if we were doers of the word we should endeavor to remove all those defects and blemishes in our moral character and to bring our whole souls into conformity with what the law and the gospel require amen so james uses the analogy of a mirror just now we read it mirrors were made of polished metals in the ancient world but were used then as now for grooming as the verse 21 says as the verse 21 indicated we are dirty and need help seeing what areas of our lives need cleansing and straightening only a foolish person examines his natural face and does nothing to clean it up christians should expect god's word not only to reveal our imperfections but also to show us what to do to correct them i just want to repeat this christians should expect god's word not only to reveal our imperfections but also to show us what to do to correct them amen so james concluded his section on action with a final plea concerning true religion religion that is clean and spotless is practiced not only in love for god but also in love for neighbors true faith in a good and just god is demonstrated in good and righteous deeds that rectify injustice amen so james used two examples as hallmarks of this kind of religion first giving aid to the fatherless and widows in their affliction these two groups are those to whom god draws near isaiah chapter 1 verse 17 says learn to do good seek justice correct oppression bring justice to the fatherless plead the widow's cause and second to remain spotless that is unstained by the world's idolatrous pursuit of wealth and power this will mean living against the grain of our cultures to create a counter culture of god's kingdom so james understands that to visit and care for those who cannot offer us wealth or power is a sign of the messiah's kingdom amen hallelujah hallelujah to obey the word amen arabian horses go through rigorous training in the deserts of the middle east the trainers require absolute obedience from the horses and test them to see if they are completely trained so the final test is almost beyond the endurance of any living thing the trainers force the horses to do without water for many days then he turns them loose and of course they start running toward the water but just as they get to the edge ready to plunge in and drink the trainer blows his whistle the horses who have been completely trained and who have learned perfect obedience they stop 
they turn around and come pacing back to the trainer they stand there quivering wanting water but they wait in perfect obedience when the trainer is sure that he has their obedience he gives them a signal to go back to drink now this may be severe but when you are on the trackless desert of arabia and your life is entrusted to a horse you had better have a trained obedient horse if a horse could obey and honor the master's command how much more we must obey the word of god we must obey the laws of our god amen hallelujah isaiah chapter 1 verse 3 the ox knows its owner and the donkey its master's crib but israel does not know my people do not consider that's what the word of god to isaiah even jeremiah chapter 8 verse 7 even the star in the heavens knows her appointed times and the turtle dove the swift and the swallow observe the time of their coming but my people do not know the judgment of the lord so this is a common attitude of mind towards god in these days this attitude is strange and unnatural this attitude is fatal it separates us from god and separation from him is the very definition of death dear people faith obeys the word that's what we are looking into faith obeys the word that's what james in his epistle he gives it as a first characteristics of faith we have a best example for faith we all know abraham abraham is the best example for faith this faith brings obedience to the word of god in his life let us learn to obey god like abraham in our lives amen in hebrew 11 one verse only is given to the biographies of abel enoch and noah but to abraham there are 12 verses given which summarize some 14 chapters in the book of genesis and no ancient figure is held in such high favor by such a large proportion of the human race jews christians and even muslims profoundly reverence abraham and the bible is full of reference to this great servant of the lord one day abraham who lived in the city of ur heard god speaking to him we can see this in genesis chapter 12 and verses 1 and immediately he had finished speaking to him abraham obeyed god as we learn from genesis chapter 12 verse 4 and even hebrews chapter 11 verses 8 through 10 Abraham knew quite definitely that God had spoken to him even though he did not know where he was going this was the obedience of faith amen so we are going to look into the five aspects of the obedience of faith as illustrated in this particular period of Abraham's life the first one is Abraham's obedience was prompt the first p is prompt the abraham's obedience was prompt from genesis chapter 12 verse 1 and 4 hebrews chapter 11 verse 8 how god spoke we do not know but that he did speak we are quite sure and directly abraham heard his command in faith he obeyed his obedience was prompt when god speak to us it is sometimes very difficult to explain how how do we know that god is speaking to us he has spoken to us we are sure and all that we have to do is promptly to obey his voice promptly obey the word of god 
many times when we read the bible some of the verses it comes to us it talks to us directly are we obeying that particular word and second aspects in the abraham's uh, obedience was practical the first one is abraham's obedience was prompt and second abraham's obedience was practical we are told in genesis chapter 12 verse 4 that when god spoke to him abraham left as the lord had told him abraham's faith was not a hasty or nebulous belief it was active amen hallelujah hebrews 11 verses 8 through 10 by faith abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would afterward receive as an inheritance and he went out not knowing where he was going by, by faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a foreign country dwelling in tents with isaac and jacob the heirs with him of the same promise for he waited for the city which has foundations whose builder and maker is God. Hallelujah. So faith obeyed God by launching out upon his promises and by doing his bidding without question. If faith does not work, it is dead. That's what again we read it from the epistle of James. So Abraham's faith did work. With the packing up of all his goods, saying goodbye to all his friends and moving out to do God's will. Amen. So God is speaking to you and me. Are we taking any practical action to demonstrate our faith in him? Are we obey his words and do something? Is our faith is in action? Let's check it ourselves. Amen. And thirdly, Abraham's obedience was progressive. Uh, Abraham's uh, obedience was prompt. Abraham's obedience was uh, practical. Abraham's obedience was progressive. When Abraham left Ur, this was only the first step of faith. But one step of faith will always lead on to another and another and so on. Psalms 37 verse 23 says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. Hallelujah. We can notice in Genesis chapter 12, the progressiveness of Abraham's faith in this first stage of his experience. Verse 4 it says, Abraham's left. Verse 5, Abraham's set out. Verse 6, Abraham's traveled through. And verse 8, Abraham's went on. And verse 9, Abraham set out and continued. Amen. Hallelujah. So God's desire is that the principle of faith should operate throughout every part of our lives. He wants us to trust him not only for spiritual needs but also for temporal needs. Hallelujah. Throughout our life, throughout our life, we have to trust God. Amen. So the obedience of the word is progressive. Amen. And fourthly, Abraham's obedience was peculiar by all human standards it was a very strange thing that Abraham did what he did suddenly he pick up all his belongings and gather his family together and leave the place where he lived for so many years almost 70 to 75 years he gathered all his belongings. He gathered his family. And leave his own home. And leave his friends and relatives. Where he was going? Don't know. 
if suppose his families and relatives must have asked him they might have asked him where are you going what was his answer don't know we could imagine the situations so in the eyes of the world what they would think what they will think definitely they will say you are such a fool we never see your decision is a foolish thing even today if you leave your job and go to any missionary place definitely your friends will say are you a fool are you wasting your money are you wasting your energy are you wasting your uh, uh, are you wasting all your young days going as a missionary leaving your job leaving your family living your uh, joyous life living all your comforts to this world it will be a foolish thing amen hallelujah Hall- hallelujah it may be peculiar in the eyes of the world but it is very pleasing in the eyes of god amen hallelujah if god talks to you if god has called you to do his work leave it and do it even though it is peculiar in the eyes of the world amen hallelujah and fifthly abraham's obedience was productive amen hallelujah hallelujah by simply hearing god's voice and doing his will abraham produced something for the glory of god and for the blessing of millions and millions of people genesis chapter 12 verse 2 let's read genesis chapter 12 and verse 2 i will make you a great nation i will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing amen hallelujah hallelujah so god is giving a great blessing to abraham genesis chapter 22 verse 18 in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice amen hallelujah so god is giving his reward amen not only to abraham but to all his generations millions and millions of people even today Amen hallelujah all the blessings of Abraham we received through Jesus Christ amen hallelujah hallelujah praise be to the name of the lord in chapter 26 verse 2 to 5 let's read then the lord appeared to him the lord appeared to isaac and said do not go down to egypt dwell in the land of which i shall tell you sojourn in this land and i will be with you and bless you for to you and your descendants i give all these lands and i give and i will perform the oath which i swore to abraham your father and i will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven i will give to your descendants all these lands and in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge my commandments my statutes and my laws amen hallelujah hallelujah so god is giving a certification that abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge my commandments my statutes and my laws amen hallelujah that is why god is blessing generations after abraham god wonderfully multiplies our simple acts of faith and obedience Let's read Deuteronomy chapter 11 verses 26 to 28. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verses 26 to 28. Behold, I set before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you today. And the curse if you do not obey the commandments of the Lord your God but turn aside from the way which I command you today to go after the other gods which you have not known. Today what we are going to choose no matter what has happened to you in the past or what is going on in your life right now. It has no power to keep you. 
from having an amazingly good future if you will walk by faith in god and if you obey his commandments if you obey his voice obey his statutes and obey his laws amen hallelujah my faith didn't remove the pain my faith didn't remove the pain but it got me through the pain trusting god didn't diminish or vanquish the anguish but it enabled me to endure it hallelujah so faith obeys the word we look five things five aspects of abraham's faith in his early days his faith was abraham's obedience was prompt abraham's obedience was practical abraham's obedience was peculiar abraham's obedient was progressive and abraham's obedient was productive amen hallelujah may the lord god bless you as you obey his commandments as you hear his voice and obey his laws may the lord bless you amen amen